Lily, stop. What's up beautiful people? Welcome back to my channel. I'm about to do a video that I have never officially done before. Yes, I've done it in some vlogs, but I've never fully shown you my entire meal prep for the week. My dogs are in the background. My husband's playing with my dogs. So if you hear some weird noise throughout this video, that's just life, baby. Um, so I am gonna show you how to turn this into I'm super, super excited to show you this because when I meal prep, I feel like I am successfully eating nutrient dense foods throughout the whole week. Rather than when I don't meal prep, I find myself wanting to go out to restaurants more and just be lazy on my food and not really care about consuming nutrient dense foods because I don't have them prepared. But when I do, I feel very put together in terms of my fitness and health goals because it's so simple just to pull it out of the fridge prepare it in a bowl or Tupperware and bring it to go or eat it on the go, etc. You catch my drift. So without further ado, I'm gonna stop chatting your ear off and let's get to it. First, let me explain to you that we have some sweet potatoes and we have some spaghetti squash that are going to take the longest out of this entire meal prep to cook because you have to be in the house while the oven is on so you can't leave. So I either choose sweet potatoes or spaghetti squash, but I figured I would do both this time to show you guys how I prep both, just to give you guys an insight and you guys can choose which ones you guys prefer for yourselves. So, let's go. All right. Okay, so the very first thing I'm gonna show you guys is how I meal prep my chicken. You simply spray it down with some Pam, or cooking spray, whatever you wanna use. Throw it in there. You're going to wash your hands, because that's gross. I took so many food classes in high school and in college. I've always been a huge foodie. I feel like people that are understand that know that washing your hands and food safety and all that is super important. Anyways, open a can at 505. Simply dump it on in about half. And you're gonna put it on low for six to nine hours. I would say if you're just doing spices instead of the sauce, it's going to be a lot drier, so you'll probably only want to have it in there for like six hours. Um, but if you're doing a sauce, there's a lot more liquid in there and it can stand for nine hours without getting dry. So that's how I prep my chicken. It's super, super easy. Crock pot is amazing. I can do a few recipes in a separate video of crock pot that we love. Just let me know, comment down below if you want to see that video. Okay, so chicken is done. Don't. She's always scratching at my leg when I'm doing these videos because she wants attention. She loves being in the spotlight, clearly. She's a big ham. Anyways, let's work on the sweet potatoes because those are gonna take a, the longest. So how to choose the best sweet potatoes, um, the most sweet sweet potatoes, is to find the ones that are the deepest red that you can find, whether they be organic or generic they're going to be sweet. I can say the organic is sweeter. Same with bananas. I don't know what it is, but the organic stands true to be sweeter. So cooking time is going to matter on how many sweet potatoes you have. About eight sweet potatoes. Uh, we'll do like six or seven or eight, I would say is the highest number we'll do. Uh, and then what you wanna do is take your knife and simply prick it in the center, make a nice, deep line in there, like so. So you're going to do this with all sweet potatoes. This is probably not the best knife to use. Okay, so what you wanna do is press your convect 425 Fahrenheit start. And once you click start, you wanna open this bad boy up, grab your sweet potatoes and put them in there. As it's heating up, which is a big step. One hour and let's do 20 minutes. How you know when they're done is they're gonna be oozing out. Uh, you don't want them too oozy out because, too oozy out all the way because you're gonna lose the sweetness, but you wanna wait till they're nice and oozing and then you press the fork in there and make sure they're all good to go and then you can take them out. I would say an hour and 20 minutes for that many sweet potatoes is Gucci. The next thing we are going to be preparing while the sweet potatoes cook is the spaghetti squash. Now I have Steve 
cut these for me because I am just super, super scared the knife is gonna slip in some way. And we also don't have the sharpest knives. So I have him use his force to cut these just because the stem part is really easy or really hard to get through. So if you have a husband, boyfriend, significant other around that's stronger than you and you have dull knives, there's a scenario for you. So these are cut, um, I got two of them, and you are going to scrape out the center. Okay, so you have all of your squash done. Um, what you wanna do is, again, line a baking sheet, pop these babies down, face down. You're going to take some water and cover the top so that they cook nice and even evenly. The water allows the spaghetti squash to steam underneath. There is your spaghetti squash. Once the oven is done, we're going to pop it in there. I'll tell you guys the degrees and everything uh, when we get there, but if you have two ovens, um, you can pop it in now at 460 for 40 to 50 minutes, uh, depending on how many squash is you have. Okay, so the next thing we're going to cook up is Brussels sprouts. And I don't make Brussels sprouts very often just because I think that cutting them takes a lot of time, but they're also so, so healthy for you. They add a lot of fiber. Uh, they have so many nutrients in them. So I've been really trying to get on my Brussels sprout game. Um, but if you have, if you're someone who has trouble digesting them or you get really bloated after eating them, try cutting them into fours. Uh, that way it's broken down a little bit more and your body can digest it a lot easier. So, as you can see, Brussels sprouts take some time, but again, they're so easy and just an easy way to add some nutrient-dense foods into your meals. If you guys watched my New Year's resolution video, you'll know that I'm trying to add more greens to my meals again. And honestly, like, when food isn't prepped, it's so easy to give in and go out to eat and spend your money there. So, Finally, our beautiful Brussels sprouts are cut. The next quick, easy veggie we are going to be cooking up is some green beans. Steve and I actually were inspired by this show called Salt, Fat, Acid, Heat. <laughs> it's so hard because like, I never know the correct order of that show. Anyways, we were super inspired by the chef or cook on there who just created some amazing meals. So if you want to get inspired, definitely watch that show on Netflix. Um, but anyways, one of the things that we got inspired to start cooking more of is green beans. And I was always intimidated of green beans because I thought I had to have a steamer, etc. But what I didn't realize is that you can cook these in like three minutes if you boil some water, throw it on the stove, and blanch them. It's super, super easy. So you can do this also another way. Um, you can take all these green beans, and cut off the ends of them so that they're ready to just eat as a whole. But I like to take a shortcut and just cook the entire thing. And then when Steve and I have them on a plate, we don't eat these end little guys. We just bite them off and keep them off to the side. That's just who we are. That's just who we are. And I don't want to take some time. I don't want to take more time to cut more veggies because I'm already doing so much. So if you're the same way, you don't have to cut these green beans. You can just take the easy route out. Brussels sprouts are going to be cooking after the spaghetti squash. So stay tuned for what we're going to do next. So what you literally want to do is so, so simple. Grab a pot, fill it up, make sure the water is super hot so that it boils really quick. You're going to place it on your stove and put on boil. Then to make it boil faster, you're going to add some salt. You can be very generous with this. And also it's gonna add a little bit of flavor to your green beans is what I've noticed, salt versus not salted. Uh, the best rice is sushi rice. It's our absolute favorite. So what you want to do is you want to put 540 grams of dry rice into a bowl so that you can uh, drain it and get the starch out of it. So you're going to rinse it. And strain it. See all that white? You want to make sure you're draining all of that out. 
Then you're gonna add 750 grams of water to this. So you're gonna zero out your bowl. Uh, before you put this in, you wanna make sure that all of this rice is not sticking to the sides. Then you're gonna hit pressure, pressure cook for four minutes. Next thing is the green beans. You wanna make sure you go nice and gentle. You know they're gonna be done if they're bright green. Okay, the next thing we're going to prepare is some mushrooms. Uh, you just wanna pan a pan. And of course, mushrooms are going to be super dirty when you get them, so you wanna make sure you wash them pretty thoroughly. Okay, nice and clean. Now all you're gonna do is take them and kind of just rip them apart into small pieces. It's way easier than trying to bring a chop board out or cutting board out and chopping them with a knife. So you're just going to cut them up like so. And the reason why I prepare these ahead of time is because I've found I'm pretty lazy when it comes to making every single meal, but if I have things prepped, I can just throw them together in a bowl, heat it up, and call it a day. You know what I mean? So, Steve, on the other hand, my husband, if you guys are new to my channel, he uh, makes mushrooms with every freaking meal. I'm telling you, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So, as you can see, actually you probably can't see because of all the steam, but these green beans are bright green. They look amazing. So, I'm pretty sure they've done, they're done. They've been in there for like four or five minutes, actually. We're gonna strain these guys. They look beautiful, nice and bright green. And then what you wanna do, place them in a bowl. So you're gonna just leave these in the sink to kind of cool down. Again, stop cooking and um, strain them again and then put them in a Tupperware that you should be good to go to go in the fridge for later. All right, so progress on the mushrooms. I generally put it on medium high and saute them in either olive oil or just like pan. Another thing that I meal prep is some chia seeds. And you don't have to meal prep chia seeds. Chia seeds are so good for your digestive tract especially when they're in their gelatinous form. I don't know if you've seen a chia seed dry, but here they are dry. They are fine for you in your digestive tract, but they don't work as well as when they're liquidated and soaked. So they're nice and thick, and they have like a sticky texture, I would say. Uh, you just wanna add some almond milk to it and simply cover it and throw it in there overnight. Okay, so, oh, one more thing. I don't have whole lemons with me because we didn't get any new ones yesterday at the store, but I have a problem with letting lemons rot in the fridge every time I get them because I forget to cut them up. I'm really super lazy with that. Okay, so next here we have our Brussels sprouts. You wanna spray the pan again. What you're gonna wanna do is drizzle some olive oil. Roll them sleeves up so they don't get all oily. Okay, so this is a garlic sea salt that I really like, all natural. And I love, love, love garlic, so I'm also gonna add a little bit of garlic powder. So this has salt in it, of course. Sea salt. So I don't need to add any more salt to this. And the next one, then I'm gonna add some balsamic vinegar. And then you simply, simply toss it like so. And it's always recommended that you go in there and you toss them halfway through. I never do that. Um, I just think it takes more time and sometimes I just pop it in and forget about it until the timer goes off. So that's, again, just me being completely honest. 